Good morning. All right, so can you tell us who you are and what you do? So I'm Taylor. I'm a primary keeper here at Chiha. I actually take care of the, the red wolves on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, and what are you doing personally with your job to help preserve the species? Um, so like I said, I do a lot of the day-to-day -day stuff. So that is just monitoring the individuals we have here on the park. So just watching their health, making sure they're getting all the mental stimulation that they need, the prey items that they need, uh, food, uh, making sure their health is good. Um, and then if there are any um, like breeding requirements, we, we go through and we take care of all that too. Okay, and how can red wolves crossbreed with other species? Um, well, in the wild, most wolves in the wild are going to have some, I want to say it was like three to all the way up to 80% of uh, other canid species, primarily in North America, coyotes. Uh, but I do believe all canids can interbreed with each other. So what is SSP? SSP is the Species Survival Plan. Um, it is an organization, it's a group of people that get together um, once a year and they discuss a variety of different things. So most, they recommend different breeding pairs to help keep the population uh, healthy. They go through and they calculate like genetic variants and different um, genetic coefficients or inbreeding coefficients and things like that, just so that we're sure that the wolves that are breeding are uh, breeding and maintaining a healthy population. And what are some common genetic mutations in red wolves? Um, well, there are, there are a couple. So when a pup is born, there are a couple of things that you want to look over right away. So with a population so small, cleft palates can be pretty common. Um, you want to make sure everything's okay with their umbilical area, listen to their hearts. Uh, sometimes there can be uh, underdeveloped lungs. Um, pretty common with red wolves is um, anal fissures. So the lining of their anus can be fused to other linings in their body, which can cause some issues. There are also um, some issues with the pads of the neonate's paws, so you just watch out for that. So is there any type of underlying cause, like population issues or the lack of population? That causes the, yes. these problems? So when your population is really small, there's a small genetic pool, and when your genetic pool is small, it can sometimes lead to higher outcomes of these issues. Taylor, how did red wolves get to this point? Um, hunting. Uh, so the whole big bad wolf thing, uh, wolves are scary. Uh, people, or they were painted to be scary and the population dropped dramatically. Uh, the main reason was probably has to do something with like livestock, wolves getting in and hunting uh, farmers, livestock and things like that. So if you get rid of the big predator, the livelihood of uh, locals will increase, or that was the theory, but anyways. Do you think that it could have anything to do with their resemblance to the coyote? It could be. Um, so the coyote population has dramatically increased since the red wolf population has decreased and the negative association of coyotes with people uh, has also yeah, added to the decrease in the red wolf population as of right now. And what is the red, red wolf population at the time? Uh, the wild population, I believe, is lower than or fewer than 20. So they are technically the most endangered uh, canid in North America, if not the world.